See, where's my camera? There it is. I'm resident of Kala with Joel Sains for YouTube, joined by my buddy Butch Rosenbaum as we continue our Western movies review with Butch's selection, The Quick and the Dead. And what a movie this is. Gene Hackman, Sharon Stone, Tobin Bell, Gary Sid <laughs> Oh my God. Crow. Russell Crowe, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, the guy from um, They Live and The Thing. Um, what's his name? Or, no, not that guy. The other guy I'm thinking about. That's the wrong guy I'm thinking about. Um, oh, the guy who's the hired gunman in this a bit. Huh? Lance Hendrickson, who plays Ace. He's not. He's supposed to be like the Trek shooter. But yeah. there's another guy in this movie. Um, what movie was he in? He was in um, David <laughs> Keith. David Keith. Sorry, but I was blanking on his name. And I didn't realize this in a tie back to last week's film, uh, the professionals, Woody strode in his final performance. I'm glad you brought that up. I got, I got a little fun fact. So this movie began shooting in early 90, 93, 94, sorry, 94. And it stopped filming by er, or 93 stopped filming by early 94 our buddy Woody Strode would die late 1994. The movie was released 1995. So yes, he what this is his final movie, and what a performance! His his I love the fact the the person Russell Crowe has to kill is played by Woody Strode because <laughs> it's so cool how Woody Strode does it too in the movie. He keeps getting up. He. <laughs> Um, no, no, Woody Woody's not the Indian. No, he's not. No, I haven't no. noticed that he's not. Uh Woody is at the very beginning when Sharon oh, Stone oh, writes the right. film. It was the Undertaker. Oh, like that's right. Five two or something like that. They have him listed wrong, man. They may have, but um because you're talking about a spotted horse. Yeah, yeah. They have him listed. Who, who's an amazing character. I mean, that's one of my favorite things about this film is there's uh, every, well, not every character, but every main character, and there's quite a few to be truthful, is interesting. Yeah. What's weird is, too, the movie I saw before this, Virtuosity, Russell Crowe was the villain. So, I seen that. yeah, him and, him and uh, Denzel Washington. Now, so when I watch this and I see him casting this, I'm thinking, wait, is he going to be the heel? Because he just was the heel movie I just saw. And to my surprise, when I watched this, he wasn't. So, well, he's, he's sort of on the, like, he, he used to be in Gene Hackman's character's gang. They used to ride together. They used to wonder who was the fastest. And fun, fun fact about this film, Gene Hackman was the fastest draw on set. <laughs> I was I was reading something about that. They they um, sorry for the glasses, folks. I, I don't want to get the blame. Um, let's see, Gene Hackman. Let's see, uh, they hired somebody, a a stunt man to uh, you know teach him how to quick draw. Yeah. And uh, Gene Hackman, due to the fact he had less scenes and less time filming, he got to practice more, and it, it was claimed. Where was that? I think I read that on TV tropes. That that's why he was the fastest because he had more time to practice. Yeah. Well, he doesn't. That's the thing too. He doesn't have a lot of scenes compared to Sharon Stone, Russell Crowe's character. He's. It's weird how his. You watch this movie and you think, well, he's in a lot of the scenes. Well, yes, he is. But there's also scenes he's just not in where the other characters are talking and doing other things. Um, the one guy who's sort of the rapist, he comes down the stairs. Gene Hackman's not in that frame. Um, also, there's a scene where the, the two, the like the three scenes I remember specifically Hackman being in is the opening of the, as, well, the, the scene where they're all in the bar and she, they're going to hang Russell Crowe's character and Sharon Stone shoots, shoots the rope down, which is going to be a tie into later. 
I won't I won't try to jump around like last time. <laughs> so, <laughs> but this this was a really great pick by you. What what was Thank the you. reason for the pick? I wanted something a little different, you know. Um, you know, we 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 we've been hitting some of the big names, um, film wise and actor wise, and I think this is an extremely underappreciated and underrated film. Um, I, I'll jump into it. I, I think the reason it's underrated and underappreciated, at least when it first came out, was the fact that the main the lead character is a woman. And, you know, you don't see a lot of women leads in, in Westerns. I, this may be the first one. Uh, what was that? The Rowdy Girls. I think that was like late 90s. Uh, but <clears throat> it's criminally underappreciated. I mean, Sam Raimi, you know, take your choice. Best known for Evil Dead or the the Tobey Maguire Sp- Spider-Man films. You know, it's a, it, to me, it's great. He He... There's so many little homages to uh, Sergio Leone, mm-hmm. and but you still have the Sam Raimi, and there's a name for it, but I don't know what it's called, where like they m- move the camera in, but they do it with the lens where it's going out, so it's kind of coming in and going out, and you, so the background is changing, but the person is standing there, and it turns. If you've seen pretty much any Sam Raimi film, you know what I'm talking about because he, he does that's his trademark. And I love that. But this this movie could have been done. And I'm glad it wasn't. But this could have been done with Clint Eastwood. I mean, the beginning and the end really are straight out of High Plains Drifter and Pale Rider. Somebody's riding a horse in from somewhere, and at the end, that same person goes riding out. And you know, they they've come to um right or wrong and uh in this play and i was thinking man imagine if this movie had been made uh you know 20 years before with clint and then a lot of interesting actors playing these interesting characters because um david keith i i feel like his character is supposed to be reminiscent of levon cleef's yeah. colonel Mortimer from a few dollars more He's so like the rest of the like, more than more of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like if you know Westerns, you're supposed to pick up on that. But if you don't, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. There's, I was telling this to somebody, I forget who it was on YouTube, that when you watch this movie, you need to go back and watch a lot of the old Westerns before you watch this. And you'll get it a better, because if you don't, because I could get why, and I'll get into why right away I didn't have a, a uh, I didn't want to watch this movie. I was more mad at Sam Raimi than anything else. Uh, you know why. Uh, but it, the reason why, folks, is, and by the way, I got to tell you, me, you, Gordon, and Patrick are all going to get together and review uh, Dark Man. Uh, so <laughs> that's going to be a lot of fun. We'll review that. Yeah, because if I forget the book, anybody, I'm going to go to hell. Um, so <laughs> there's that. Uh, <laughs> And with this, I was mad at Sam Raimi. I knew, and again, it isn't all his fault. I'm not putting it all on him. But at the time, he took his script for The Shadow, which was which was going to be the definitive Shadow movie. Don't get me wrong. I like the movie with Alec Baldwin. It's good. Um, he took his Shadow script and turned it into Dark Man. And really, Dark Man is... As is a little more of a shadow movie than the shadow movie. Um, because no, it's understanding yeah. they had the rights but lost them, and that's why he had to make the changes. Yeah, that's okay. I can't again. I'm not mad totally mad at him. So, it, and another reason I wanted to watch this movie too obviously, I'd seen the trailer with my grandfather, so I went to go see this movie in theater. It was a lot of fun to go see it in theater. Uh, no, my grandfather did not go, but my my mother. I begged my mother to take me. This was, so, and she took me. She goes, you know, I don't like westerns. This is your grandfather. So I said, I know. I'm I'm going to tell him about it. I'm sort of like his reporter. And so, when I watched, I said, there's. I said, you when you watch this, you will get a great appreciation for this because it has every little western nod you can have. And like you were saying, Colonel Mortimer, 
David Keith really, I love how he, like you said, he's smoking the pipe. I love the way he's dressed too. And I love the guns he uses. I also like, I, I like to think that Lance Hendrickson's character, I think, now don't hold me to this, I think is a nod to the character from um, My Name is Nobody. Not Henry Fonda's character, but the other guy's character. A bit. It could, it could be. It could uh, be. I don't think it's a complete nod because it's a little off. Oh, but no. Way, but the way he sort of trick shoots, that character does a lot of trick shooting in, in that in the in that movie, it's sort of a it's sort of a small nod to because again, it's supposed to be, it's not just a nod to um, all the old westerns like Eastwood was in. It's also a nod to Leone, uh, a lot of a big nod to Leone's movies. And my name is, is, is nobody is a Leone movie. There's mm-hmm. a bit, there's a bit of a nod to Once Upon a Time in the West in this. Uh, obviously, the the hanging uh, sequences. Uh, because if you watch Once Upon a Time on the West, Charles Bronson, who should have been in this goddamn movie, uh, <laughs> that's my one complaint. And my only complaint, I swear. Um, and yes, he would have been alive when this movie was being done. Uh, but who would you cast him as? I would just cast him as another duelist. Honestly, somebody who not exists her- or a new one. A new one, not harmonica, but somebody who just comes who accepts one of the challenges and um is a gunman i wouldn't have been harmonica because that have been too obvious i'm trying to think of another character he could have played but um oh he could have played um like an old again it was set in the wild west he could have just been a um like a like a hunter or something accepting the challenge the um the swedish guy that yeah. goes against the kid he could, I mean, he didn't have to be Swedish, uh, yeah. but because um, in the first round, interesting, quick, quick recap for everybody. Um, Gene Hackman is in charge of this town. Uh, he controls it. And I, I don't mean like legally uh, and voted in charge. He took it over and he decides to have a uh, duel, dueling competition. Yeah. You are this person, this person meet and they move down. Well, during the first round, you don't have to die. It's just, you know, you give up, you know, nope, I give up. After the first round, it's, no, it's to the death. Yeah. So that way, I think you could do that. I, I personally, if it was Charles Bronson, the kid gets wounded, nothing bad. And, you know, you have Charles Bronson say something about, eh, I must be getting old. <laughs> and then he throws away the gun like the Swedish guy does. And, and you know, then he's out of the picture. But, you know, it kind of a, a nod, another nod um to to passing the baton almost literally yeah. oh yeah another actor in this film pat hingle yep Hingle's in this movie and it's great to see him in another western finally i mean he was doing the batman movies he did a really good commissioner gordon um we talked about hanham high how really hanham high sort of prepared him for commissioner gordon in a large way and if you have yeah. not seen hanham high Stop watching this video later and go watch it. Um, this movie is really good, though. I like, like you're saying, he has a dual contest. I mean, he's an, this is one of the best antagonists. This is a far better antagonist in this movie than he plays in Unforgiven. I like Unforgiven, but here he's a lot, he's in charge of the town. He's in, he's got his own, he's got his own game that he buys and pays for every, anything he wants, he can buy get either legally or illegally it doesn't matter he's the fastest draw in the west and he knows it and hackman knows he knows it and i love how he plays this character it's it's one of his most underrated not just performance not just western performances but performances in his career i agree this is this is better than his performance in unforgiven which uh you know as i mentioned before i'm not a big fan of unforgiven just because i felt robbed by by the lack of the roaring rampage of revenge, uh, other than that, it's, you know it's a fine film, of course. Um, but there's another kind of little tie-in to Unforgiven. Uh, uh, one of the, I think it's the first person he fights. I could be wrong. Is uh, maybe the second is Ace, the sharpshooter played by Lance Henriksen. And 
Lance's big thing is, or, or Ace's big thing is, he killed, I forget who he supposedly killed, the, the Tungstall brothers or something. Mm. And he's standing there and he's like, I mean, he's like doing his mustache and doing his hair. I, I also thought that might have been a little bit of reference to uh, Wild Bill Hickok yeah. with the mustache and the hair. But, um, he the, the the ace has shot these people and he's like you know you know how did you kill those people Gene Hackman's character is asking him how did you kill them oh, blah 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 he's like you know that, that's for, you know that's interesting because I'm the one that killed them yeah and you can just see him, Ace is going oh shit yeah the great thing I mean thing is he goes to pull the gun and and uh, does he shoot his, he shoots his thumb off on this hand right. Yeah, he shoots. So no, him. He shoots it in this hand. Well, then he goes to pull the other, the other hand, and it's through this. I mean, you know, ridiculous shooting ability. You know, I mean, kind of like the Lone Ranger shooting guns out of hands. But um, and then he just blows a big old canoe hole through the head. But <clears throat> it, just like an Unforgiven, when he's talking to the reporter and. Um, uh, I can't think of the actor's name. English, she played in my. Uh, uh, my name is something. Oh, he 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 ended up being uh, Harry Potter's uh, mentor in the 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 Harry Potter films. Richard something. God, I'm I'm doing horrible. What? Uh, Richard Gavel or was it? Or am I mispronouncing yeah. it? I, I can't remember. But um anyway, this this guy, this old English guy had claimed to have killed somebody and Gene Hackman was like, you know, how'd you kill him when they were already dead when when uh, you know I killed them and they were dead a month before that or something. Something to that and it's just kind of a, 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 a feels like a call or I guess uh, unforgiven would be a callback to this. No, you're right, you're right because with unforgiven He's, Richard Harris. Yeah, Richard Harris is the guy who plays he plays English Bob in Unforgiven. And he's the reporter who later is going to be in a movie called Warehouse Thir- or a show called Warehouse 13, um, who's also in Death Wish 5, by the way, <laughs> as an agent. Um, he He's writing down English Bob's life story, his bi- biography or audit, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. Damn anyway. It. Yeah, <laughs> he. So they come to this town that is run by Gene Hackman's character Bill, who is the worst roofer you'll ever goddamn meet. And he, he's a hell of a shot though, and a and a mean ass sheriff and a mean ass lawman. And he's not exactly innocent lawman. That's sort of the point oh, of no. the. Movie. We'll we'll get into that in another time. But the point that Butch is trying to make is that. There's a story about where English Bob had to defend some woman's honor. Well, he wasn't really defending some woman's honor. It was a woman that English Bob wanted to was sweet on and wanted to sleep with. The problem, the guy who was banned and was already banned, they called him Two Guns something, and it's it's all oh, it's because he carried two guns. And Bill starts laughing. He goes, "No, it wasn't because he carried two guns. It's because his thinny was so big, <laughs> it looked like two barrels." I'm <laughs> just like. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, when you hear that line, like, Gene Hackman says it so straight, but he's laughing too, and it's funny as fuck, uh, but so, the gun, the Colt gun that uh, the one guy shoots blew up in his hand, which was a malfunction of the model, and English Bob, who was, who was slow and steady, aimed and blew him away. Um, the guy did not carry two guns. Now, with this, Richard Harris, unfortunately, is not... He could have been in this movie, though. But he wasn't, unfortunately. And I love the cast. And who They were they were super smart with their cast. Uh, I mean, Sharon Stone, Gene Hackman. The fact that they get um, the guy who goes on, Russell Crowe. Because I, when Russell... Like I told you, when Russell Crowe gets put in this movie, I had just seen the... Velocity, and I'm thinking he was a hell of a heel in that movie. Like he was mean, 
And so you're sort of wondering, is he a heel? He somewhat is because he was a part of the game, but he reformed his life. He became a priest. He goes, I won't kill, I won't kill, which brings me back to your the rule that they laid. Well, you don't have to kill in the first round. And then and then Gene Hackman ups the ante. Well, now in the second round, you got to kill. Um, it's so hard to pick underrated performances in this movie because there's a lot. Uh, but I got to give a big nod to Leonardo DiCaprio. Before his ass boarded the Titanic and got the nail Kate Winslet's character, uh, he got to do this. And what a performance he gives for what he's on screen for. He steals some of this movie. He does. Uh, you know, he does that. He does it very right because that's when it's one of those roles that it, you have to have a right amount of gusto and bravado to do that role to play the kid. And he nails it because I think it's one of those roles that, if done wrong, could very easily just be very over the top. And can you believe it? I am. I have improved upon perfection, uh, and it's you know just so over the top. But uh, and 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 his death scene. Spoiler alert. Yeah. He doesn't film folks, and, and uh, he's claimed the entire time he's Gene Hackman's son, and Gene Hackman refuses to to admit it. And and he's like he he's holding it, and he's like putting his hand out and. Of course, Gene Hatton, when he was like, you know, just admit I'm your son. And Gene Hatton won't say anything. But when he's Leonardo is laying there on the ground, he's like, he kind of he starts crying and he's like, I don't want to die. And you see all that bravado just melt away. That that right there, I think that's I mean, he does go through the whole film, but I think that scene he does so well. He nails that. Here's a little fun, fun part. I do think it was the character's son because oh, yeah. he. He's the, there are only two people Happen gives the, Happen gives Sharon Stone's character the opportunity to pull out, and he gives the kid the opportunity to withdraw. Now, yep. I, that's your really only real big hint that, that it, that they, it's sort of the admittance, but it isn't, but it's an admittance enough for me. Um, oh, yeah. Him, I agree. And ha- him and Hackman had great, great scenes together. <laughs> but I mean, he goes, I like Hackman's line. What's the cheapest gun you got in the store? I'm like, you son of a, you cheap bastard. <laughs> so, uh, I think, uh, yeah, Leonardo does just about, he, he, if he doesn't steal a scene, he, he's, he's, he's interesting to watch. Yeah. But I, I'm going to go with uh, Gene Hackman because, for a reason you said, He's not in this film that much, but he feels like he's in every scene because his character just lords literally over this hotel. And he's, you know, his character is omnipresent. And <clears throat> again, another role that could have been, you know, a little mustache twirly. <laughs> and dang, if this isn't an interesting guy and not that you're ever necessarily um think he's a, a you know a good guy or you come around to his way of saying it, but you you enjoy it you know it's it's one of those thing it's one of those roles like where the 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 villain i hate to say it other than one little incident and you know what know what i'm about to say yeah. he's more his character is much more interesting than sharon stone's interesting yeah gene you're, you're right in picking Gene Hackman, and here's why. Even though when he's on in the scene, you can't take your mind off of him because everybody's everybody does a good job of, of either hating or semi-hating Hackman's character. You're even the only reason his men are loyal is because he pays them, and that too, I think a lot of them fear him. Um, He's literally the the fastest gun in the West without saying he's the fastest gun in the West. He doesn't need to say it. He he knows he is. And the the scene that makes you hate him most is that Sharon Stone's care, uh, father, who's played by Gary Sinise of all people in this movie. Uh, I don't know. I love Gary Sinise, but um, they could have picked any <laughs> uh, but Gary Sinise. Though I get why Gary Sinise is uh, you know he's good enough for the role. So he gets 
they they tie him to to ha they go to hang him, and they give uh, Sharon Stone's character when she's a little girl going, oh, if you can just shoot your daddy from the down from the rope, you can all go go about your business. And well, she does shoot him in the head. Uh, <laughs> You know, he does the same thing, though, with the chair. Gene Hackman's character does the same thing with the chair that he does to uh, Russell Crowe's character. Yep. And then she whips up and, and shoots the, the rope. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I was thinking about that, how, you know, here's this, like in a lot of Westerns, here's this incident that traumatized her. And she comes, you know, uh, to, she comes to kill Gene Hackman's character. And... Very early in the film, she saves her dad. And I wonder, you know, I wonder if that's part of the reason, you know, towards the later end of the film, she has um, a, a crisis of faith, if you will, and, and leaves. And I've, I was wondering if that's because, you know, she, she unexpectedly gets a chance to relive that moment and she saves the person. Yeah, I think too with with Sharon Sin's character, there's a lot of confliction with her character. She's very con. It's not that she's conflicted and wanting to kill Gene Hackman's character. There's all these other people that's in her way, and she's Russell Crowe's character. You could tell there's some chemistry between her, her and Char him and Sharon Stone's character. Like in when he's when she saves his life. My, one of my favorite scenes, though, too, when it comes down between Russell Crowe and Gene Hackman's character, spoiler alert, and they, they beat him up and step on his gun hand, his men, and Hackman sees it, he kills the guy for it. You know, you, you see in, uh, I'll start with Darth Vader and Star Wars and go through a lot of films where the big bad guy, one of his one of his minions messes up, and like sometimes, and, and you'll say, "Well, this is the price of failure." And rather than shooting the guy that messes up, he'll turn and shoot some random person. Yeah. And like we're showing how evil he is. Yeah. Gene Hackman ain't ha having none of that crap in this film. No. And he's like, "You got twenty seconds," and so, well, I, "Oh, I was just doing what you would, sir." You've got fifteen seconds. And he starts running, and, and I forget. Gene Hackman turns and says something, and he grabs a rifle, and he's like, "Yeah, that's about enough time." And then shoots the guy. Uh, I think Ratsy or Ratty. I forget something to do with the rat. I remember that. Yeah, that that again, a bad guy with a little bit of honor is in an interesting character, yeah. at, at least in film. You know. Uh, we're not we're not getting into real life, but no, no. I tell you something. I said something that always cracks me up at the beginning of the film. Sharon Stone's riding in the stranger, and she comes across this guy, played by Tobin Bell. You may not know who Tobin Bell is, but I bet you do. He's Jigsaw from the Saw films, but this obviously predates that by about five years. Yeah. And uh, he's looking for some gold that he had forgotten. She comes riding up and he shoots her because he's like, nobody's getting my goad. Well, she ends up getting a drop on him. And what, what makes me laugh is she ends up uh, chaining him to this broken down wagon. I mean, if you've seen the Saw films, the, the first person, the first one, he, he chains this doctor up to, uh, I think it's a heat register. But it's just like, oh, look, maybe this is how Jigsaw got to start because his great grandfather was chained up in the Old West. And uh, which then he shows up at the shooting contest in Redemption. That's the name of the town. And of course, he, she's a Sharon Stone is about to challenge Gene Hackman right off. And uh, Tobin Bell's character shows up. Uh, his, his name is like Mad Dog or something. Yeah, he challenges her. And um, he challenges her, and anyway, she you know she ends up uh, killing him. And it, you know, all of the I don't know, are these are the, let's let, let's get a little legal here for just a second. Are these murders? Are these all murders? No, God no. I sh look, it's okay. 
you know what Mortal Kombat is, right? You know the yep. movie. Oh yeah. That's how I sort of view this. It's except for it doesn't have the stakes of the entire goddamn world on the background. And it, you know, they don't have superpowers and shit. You know, this is this in every way is a nod to every Western. It you have legal gunfights because the guy who owns the talent is corrupt and what he says goes. Um, none of them are actually murders. My again, my favorite one of my favorites is with the Indian and Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe, his character swore off kill it. Swore off kill. Oh, and I love how. Uh, uh, Gene Hackman's character. Hey, you—you you said you didn't want to kill nobody. Yeah, I don't know. And they only—I think they only give him one bullet. Yep. <laughs> a gunfight, which is funny. And then he should he said, "Oh, come on, come on, give me another bullet, give me." And then there's this blind kid picking out bullets <laughs> for Russell Crowe's he, character. And he throws it, and of course, you know, because of heroic film. He catches it, slams it in. But the, the what I was going to say was everybody that goes against Sharon Stone is a bad guy. Yeah. You know, there, it's not kind of ambiguous like say the kid Leonardo DiCaprio and the Swedish champion. You know, as far as we know, they're both okay people. Um, it, but her, like hers, is the Tobin Bell character, the the the, the Mad Dog or whatever. Um, I, I, one of the things I read on Wikipedia, there's a deleted scene, not on the DVD I have, but um, the reason they call him whatever dog is his dog would go with him. He would go hunting for gold and things got bad and he ended up killing and eating a dog because he didn't have nothing to eat. So, and they nicknamed him, you know, Mad Dog or whatever. And he hated that name. Most deserved and she goes up against, who else does she go up against? Uh, the right There's. The rapist, yeah. and then does she go up against Gene Hackman? Does that sound right? Well, she goes up. She goes up against um, Russell, Crow. Russell Crowe's character, and he wins. And I don't know they they fake her death somehow, and then she comes as they're getting ready to shut down the whole town. They do a fistful of dollars uh, tribute for you know. For the first movie, where he blows up the t- blows up part uh, building, well, the whole town blows in this movie, uh, which is awesome. It's a cool effect. It sort of gets rid of Hackman's then, and he goes, "You're not fast enough for me." And she she goes, "I am." Today. She throws the badge. Yeah, and it's really good. It's really cool the setup to it. You know, I love the dual sequence between Sh- Stone and Hackman and Stone and Crow. Um, what's your favorite dual scene? I'm sorry, go ahead. I should have known you were going to ask me this because now I got to think about it for a minute. Um, expect Joel and yeah, questions. Why'd you do this to me, Joel? I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Rosen. Right, it, it, it's a Hobby Lobby fake. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to shoot him with this thing that goes on the wall. I just I've been wanting to break that out. Um, it's still a cool favorite. Um, I really like the one between Sharon Stone and the rapist because it's pouring down rain, and she th- this is she's not really looking to kill anybody unless she has to. I mean, yeah. you know, she's kind of practical. This is somebody she's wanting to kill. Yeah, and and. and uh, Pardon me for quoting Sin, Sin City, but she she kills him and she kills him good. Yeah, she does. Because her her first shot takes one weapon, if you catch what I'm meaning, and then it takes the other weapon. <laughs> I'll probably go with that one just because I that I love that. I think that's a great great one. I, I don't think there's a bad one. I'll say that. I think they're all pretty darn good. I'll tell you an underrated one: Hackman and DiCaprio. DiCaprio gets him in the neck, and it's really a go- cool dual sequence. Again, one of my favorite scenes, too, again, to go back to the gun shop, they're shopping for guns, and everything's overpriced. And, like, <laughs> DiCaprio's like, well, you you charge a lot and stuff. And he goes, you know what? What's the piece of 
what's what's the cheapest piece of junk you got in this? Like it's like you cheap bastard. <laughs> Half it is so good in this. It's it's criminal. Uh, I wish he'd have got to do a little more and unforgive uh, like a lot be more heelish and unforgiving that. But the real heel and unforgiving is Clint Eastwood's character. Um, <laughs> That's a whole other metal of fish, there, buddy. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna cover that soon. I promise. But with this, he is really, really great in this movie and not shocking. Um, it's really, it sucks that Gene Hackman's retired. I get why though, but what a performance he gives here. The, a great, great cast, a great movie, and it's just fun from start to finish. It is. It's, it's a movie it's, that's two hours, but you never get bored with it. No, no, it does not seem like two hours. There, uh, one of my favorite things is, is they're in there uh, when uh, Russell Crowe's character, after when he shoots this Indian named Spotted Horse, who has this great thing where he's like, Spotted Horse cannot be killed by a bullet. Here where I took three. Here's where I took. Two. I mean, he's like took off his shirt, and you see all these scars. And uh, Russell Crowe's character, um, he's like, you know, he shoots him, but he doesn't kill him. He's like, give me another bullet. Give me another bullet. And Gene Hackman's character says something along the lines of what well, the, the Lord will provide or something, you know. <laughs> and when he goes, what I wished he had done, one one line I wished it when they were in DiCaprio's shop. And he's like, how much money you got there, John? I think it's what, uh, no, that's that's uh, Hackman's character, but whatever Russell Crowe's character's name is. And he's, uh, he's like, how much money you got? And he's like, none. The Lord provides me with everything I need. I think a perfect line would have been for Gene Hackman after he says, what's the cheapest piece of crap you've got? And they go, have and he goes, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to help the Lord out and, and I'll buy you this guy. I, I think that would have been a great line to put there. <laughs> and, would have, Hackman would have said it too. <laughs> and, and DiCaprio's character does turn look at, at Russell Crowe and tells him, it might be cheap, but it'll shoot straight. I wouldn't sell it if it wasn't. Yeah. Now, here's a question for you. And, and I think this every time I watch this film, and from the first time to, to earlier this week, you know, you got Russell Crowe's character. I understand he used to be a bad guy. And Gene Hackman goes and, and he gets his boys to uh, burn down the church that, that Russell Crowe's character had started. And they bring him and he's, you know, he's got, he's, and handcuffs and chains and they chain him up outside and he's like i've renounced violence i'm not going to kill why doesn't he first gunfight he's in just take the gun and go and just stand there i know it wouldn't make much of a good story because it's a whole arc and uh the way it ends but it's just like you know mm, i find your renouncing a little lacking you, you know uh, I, i'll be straight up with you on this one with with it because we're also chris character he's full of shit um <laughs> i mean he is i mean, he's but in a sense though too remember the rules in the first one you don't have to kill somebody and i think here's the thing i i think russell crow's character I get the sense because he's been in he's been in his game that he knows him. Well, he won't change the rules of this tournament, and then he does. I think even he starts to underestimate his former boss, but then after he changes the rules, he doesn't. Mm, maybe it just I keep thinking you know if you really you know if you've really renounced just you know. Pull the gun, but don't pull the trigger. You know, nobody can see me do that. You know, pull the gun, don't pull the trigger, or something. You know, if you really wanted to stand by your vows. Yeah. Yeah. But again, uh, that that it kind of ruins the ending. But it turns out. See, it turns out you're talking about Sharon Stone's character uh, and her father, uh, who was the, who was the Marshal of Redemption. Mm-hmm. And I looked the guy's name up, and I didn't write it down. Um, Yep, oh wait, yeah, I did. Hold on. Roberts Blossom. He plays the doctor in this in this movie uh, of this town. And you may not recognize the name, and I sure didn't, but if you've ever seen Home Alone, the first one, remember the cr- older neighbor who always has a shovel and everybody thinks he's a serial killer and killed his family? And then Kevin sees him at the church and, oh, that's my granddaughter. Me and my son don't talk, blah, blah, blah. 
same actor. So yeah. most likely have seen this man in another film and just didn't know it. Yeah. No, I actually had to, when I went back and watched that this weekend, my, this week, my wife's like, that's the guy from Home Alone. <laughs> so she caught that dude. <laughs> She's like, that's the, that's the old dude from Home Alone. I'm like, which old dude? <laughs> you know? And she goes, the guy with the shovel who hits Joe Pesci's character and the other guys. You know, I was like, oh, okay. So here's here's something interesting to my or a question I have for you with this. Who, because there's so many actors in this movie, who's who, who would you have put in this movie, not as a replacement, but as an add-on? Well, he wasn't alive. The first one I come to would be Henry Fonda, but he was he was already gone by about twelve years. Uh, I I'll go with one of two, and I'll let you pick which one you like best. Um, Sir Christopher Lee made one western. Yeah. Oh God, now I can't even think of the name of it. Got Raquel Welch. Um, anyway, he bring him in as uh, as either a a uh, another gunslinger or uh, as someone selling guns as a, the 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 counterpoint to Leonardo DiCaprio's character. So that way you've got somebody really young and really old as a contrast. Um, I would not want to change out, you know, per your your rule here. Uh, Lance Hendrickson's character, but I would have loved to have seen William Shatner play some, you know, some, somebody like Ace, who's not quite the dumbass, but you know, Shatner does a great um, uh, uh, kind of overblown, you know, person. It's like, yes, yes, I, I'm certain I'll win this. I can't imagine how I would lose. You know, I don't want him. I don't want him to be, you know, be over the top. But I, I would. I, I'm a huge William Shatner fan, and you know, and I'm a huge Sir Christopher Lee fan. So, I, I would, I'd like to put either one of them in there. You know what this movie's missing? One of the Carradine brothers. Um, oh, <laughs> David Keith. I mean, any of them would have. Robert. Yeah, Robert. They, any of them would have fit this, and it fit any of the roles, or just been adding a role for for one of them to be in this movie would have been really great. Um, how about Peter? Have, I've got, I got have David show up at the end, yeah, after the town's blow up as as Kane, but you don't, you know, you, he's he doesn't have any shoes on and he's just walking through town and he just looks at, at Russell Crowe's character and is like, Wow, do you are you do you do y'all need anything? And Russell Crowe be like, No, we're good. And he's like, Okay, I'll, I'll get back to my thing and just walks off. Uh, Peter Fonda would have been he was alive during this movie so he would have been a nice add on um, Henry's son also um, Henry's daughter Jane who was in a western I'm trying to think oh gosh um, Pat H Pat Hingle being in this movie is good I like that he's Considering you know him as a West, you know, you knew him from Hanham High and to see him here, it felt so good. Here's a question for you. Have you ever seen the movie The Gauntlet with him and Clint Eastwood? Clint Eastwood and I think it's where he met Sandra Locke, isn't it? Yeah. Is that a, like the unofficial, unmade, Dirty Harry movie? <laughs> if it's not, it should be. The It and Gran Torino are... are both, in my opinion, Dirty Harry movies. Yeah, I agree. Um, trying to think of who else. Oh, um, crap, who was he? Oh, um, Emilio Estevez, who played Billy the Kid, would have been good uh, in somewhere in this movie. Um, the guy who... Uh, hey, wait, have Emilio and Charlie in the... In the um, in the film, and they play the two brothers that Gene Hackman killed. Yeah, says he killed. Yeah, have a that, would have, with them. that would have been perfect, dude. That'd have been perfect. I love that. Um, 
again, just a great cast. I mean, a great film. They really, this could have went bad in a lot of ways if they did stupid stuff, but they don't, they don't give Hackman's character a stupid mustache. They don't make him do this. It's not this cheesy Western. It's very real terms. And you have this very bad man who has some honor and decency about him, which makes him interesting. But he's overall, he is a bad, bad son of a bitch. And Gene Hackman could play some bad sons of bitches. Um, any Apparently, final, um, sorry, go ahead. Any uh, final thoughts about this movie? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. sit, sit back, sit back, folks. We got a few more minutes here. Um, apparently, with Sharon Stone, she was one of the producers, and she's one of the reasons they were able to get so many, um, so many of these actors, including Gene Hackman. Uh, apparently, she personally picked Russell Crowe after seeing him in something. I, I don't remember uh, at the moment, and I didn't jot it down. <sighs> All right, let's do so many character. Pat Hingo. Uh, the fight between Court and Spotted Horse, uh, uh, Russell Crowe's character, Court. Fully only. If you watch that, if you watch that, I mean, there's lots of close ups, the eyes and the camera coming in. If, if you've ever seen the Sergio Leone film and you want to see a new one, watch the fight between Russell Crowe and Spotted Horse. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here it is. According to TV tropes, all actors were trained in quick draw. Gene Hackman had more time. It was supposed to be filmed in Durango, Mexico. However, Gene Hackman was living in Santa Fe, so they moved production to Tucson to facilitate him being in the film. And Smart yeah, you know, you know, I, I, seriously, I, I'm going to say this again. I know I've already said it, I'm going to say it again. This movie is extremely underrated. It, it, to me, this is like a almost like a un, unproduced, unfilmed Clint Eastwood film. Because I mean, uh, other than maybe the little bit about um, uh. uh you know, scenes with Sharon Stone sleeping with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and, uh, you know, little bits of gender. You take that away. This could have been Clint Eastwood. Imagine having Clint's son, Scott, play young, uh, his young younger self, and he shoots his dad, you know, yeah. just like. And, and, you know, her riding out, her riding in, uh, this... I can't. I mean, I, I can't stress it. I was like, my God, this should have been, and this feels very much like a Clint Eastwood uh, uh, late seventies, early eighties western. And I, I want. I still wonder how much of this is because, oh, your lead character is a woman. I don't want to watch this. You're missing a damn good film. And if it's because the main, the lead character is a woman, that, that's a pretty stupid reason, in my opinion. Because there's plenty of testosterone in this film. Yeah, that's the thing. Just it, look, my favorite Western, you know, this is Once Upon a Time in the West. Who's the lead? Claudia Cardell. Um, you know, she gets top billing. And I think, too, not if you're looking for a movie that has a bit of a damsel in it, the Once Upon a Time in the West, Jill's sort of a damsel, but she also takes no shit. Yeah. Um, with Sharon Stone's character, she is not a damsel in distress. No. Like, and that's the that's the beautiful part. Is I think sometimes with Westerns, most people go, oh, they're, most women are damsels. Not, no, not always. We, we just covered a movie where Claudia Carnell isn't so much a damsel with the professionals. <laughs> this movie, it's, you don't need a damsel in distress to have a Western. And this... If this movie doesn't prove it to you, go watch The Professionals, go watch Once Upon a Time in the West. There's a lot of movies. Hell, um, the movie we covered, El Dorado, there's a woman who shoots John Wayne's character. <laughs> like, but that's the thing. Like, there are a lot, of, there are Westerns where there are women who are just badasses. Mm hmm. There's, so, there's a film, I, like I said, I, I mentioned earlier, I believe it's called Rowdy Girls, and I want to say Julie Strain is in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it, so if I'm wrong on, on either part of that, I apologize to anybody. But 
all four of the main characters are women. And it's a it's not a great film, but looking at it for, you know, from that point of view where you have, you know, multiple characters in the lead, like like uh, uh, John Wayne and Robert Mitchum in uh, El Dorado. I mean, you have four female lead characters. It's <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what you if this is you know something you can't handle. I, I don't know. I, Personally, I'd say you, you need to you need to grow up just a little bit and, and move on. You know, you can. I, I would like to personally apologize apologize for, to Sam Raimi for being mad at him about the whole shadow fiasco. But <laughs> I to hear that, and I know he is also. Hey, speaking of Sam Raimi, did you know Bruce Campbell was in this? Yes, yes. Um. Note, another note of trivia, because that, that's about all I can bring to this one, is um, apparently Pat they want, Pat Hingle was wanting to do some more scenes, and Bruce Campbell was off. I'm not sure what he was filming at the time, but it was his day off. And Sam Raimi's like, hey, come over here. And apparently he just treated Bruce Campbell like crap. Mm-hmm. And not like the fun way in Evil Dead and Army of Darkness. And apparently... There was a scene. Uh, I don't. Want, uh, Bruce Campbell is listed as wedding shimp, mm. which is, uh, is a um, term that they use in the, in the Evil Dead films, meaning basically meaning a stand-in. Mm. And apparently, this was to make Pat Hingle feel better. And Sam Raimi even said to Bruce, "Don't worry, nobody will ever see this footage." But I think that's kind of cool, you know, the fact you bring in. Uh, uh, your friend to shoot some scenes with somebody to make one of your actors feel better. I mean, we hear a lot of, you know, like say Hitchcock, you know, well, actors are cattle and like that. So I, I just think that's a very nice touch from uh, a guy who, who at least everything I read appears to be, you know, a good guy and, and, and a good person. That is so awesome. That is really, really cool. Considering he before this he did the adventures of briscoe county jr before this movie ever was made uh bruce campbell very very underrated actor obviously I'm trying to not, think not this household baby <laughs> did you see the new evil dead movie i have not i have not i i uh my wife is not a horror fan so my horror watching is you know kind of over on the side so, I mean, it's something I want to see, but um, it's not like, oh, my God, I got to see it. But I would like to see it, yes. She's a big Western fan, I hear. You miss her. <laughs> <laughs> if I, meet you, I don't know if I told you this, but we were talking, and, and she said she wanted me to tell you and, and all the uh, people out there in YouTube land, but specifically you, she said her favorite Western was Kung Fu. Nice, nice. That's serious comment. That's not. I know that sounds kind of jokey, but she's like, you know, the one where the guy first. She said he was a samurai, and I'm like, first thing I thought of was uh, the one with Toshiro Mifune and Charles Bronson, Red Red Sun. Red Sun, yeah. I'm like, that's. And she's like, no, the guy. And then finally, she goes, he's a monk. I'm like, kung fu. She's like, yeah, that's it. That's it. We covered an episode on there. Uh, that is that is in the play. I will send that to Mrs. Rosenbaum directly to her messenger so she can watch our review. Um, if um, if anybody has not is is curious about Kung Fu, it's a TV show from the seventies. Yeah. Like Bill said, we covered uh, the pilot and pilot and first episode, but um, it's. I think it's on Plex. It is available, for, or it was until maybe you know. Since now that we're in June, they may have changed it. But I think it was on Plex for free, with a few commercial interruptions. And if you've never seen it, man, you need to check it out. It, it that's a really good show. There's there's an episode I'm going to hit Jewel up with, and, and eventually, and I can't wait to hear what he has to say about it. Please tell me the episode. I'd like to hear it. Foreshadowing. <laughs> I have to look it up. Honestly, we were we watched the episode sometimes on Saturday morning, mm-hmm. and in the first season, I know that much, and I'd have to get the title. But um, we'll definitely give it a watch for sure. Um, so for next week, next weekend for Saturday, um, 
I have a very, very, very cool Western for you to watch. It is the Western classic, Shane. Uh, very, very good movie. Um, I knew it was coming. Yeah, I told Butch he was gonna. He he told me he didn't watch this one. I'm like, we're gonna have to change that one. Uh, so, and, and to, just to clarify for anybody that missed it, the reason I have not seen Shane is many, many moons ago, many decades ago, actually. I'm pretty sure it was on TNT Network. Yeah. Uh, I was going to watch Kung Fu because it came on at like six o'clock on Saturday morning, and I caught like the last five minutes five or 10 minutes of Shane with the, the, the shootout at the end and the little boy coming up and Shane's riding off and the little boy's going, come back, Shane, come back. I'm like, well, shit, I don't need to watch this film. I know how it is. <laughs> so it's not, you know, it's not, I have anything against it. It's just, <clears throat> there was a video game. You may know it, Joel, uh, LA Noir. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever played it? I have, I have. Did you finish it? What's that? Did you finish it? Finish it? No, I only rented it. Okay. Well, somebody, I, I won't. What do you, do you want me to spoil it or, or not? Go ahead, because the last time I rented it, it was years ago. Um, the main character that you play, Cole Phelps, gets killed at the end. Uh... I was playing. I was about three quarters of the way through. And I had a feeling it was not going to end happily. And then some jerkwad over on Facebook ruined the ending for me. And for like a month and a half, I had no interest in finishing the game. It took me that long to get back into it. So I'm one of those people that's like, oh, you know, I, I, you know, I used to record uh, football games and I, I would, I came home one time and I actually, you know, I went to uh, rewind it and it stopped and it showed me the final score. I'm like, well, what's what's the point of watching the game? I know how it ends. Yeah. You know, admitted a a film is different than say a football game. Well, maybe not so much because you, know, you start at point A and you end at point B and, and how you get there is part of the journey. But that you know sometimes it's like okay that's just enough and it and it you know you lose interest in it. You, you know who you know whose invitation didn't get didn't get uh, for this movie, Jason, <laughs> Jason, Jason Voorhees. No, uh, I really just think this movie is just a gem. I mean, we've we've reviewed it, but I I think that if anybody doesn't want to go watch this movie because Sharon Stone has the lead, get the fuck over it. Seriously, yeah, uh, serious. move up. Come on, yeah. Because you will enjoy this movie from start to finish. It is a ride. Sam Raimi does a hell of a job. Um, I, I joke around that I get I'm mad at it, but he made a hell of a movie called Dark Man in the process. Oh, uh, why? Also, this movie did really well in the box office as well, and there was a reason for it because it's a hell of a story. Um, westerns, a mark of a good western is a director telling you a good story and being able to trust his actors. Well, every actor in this movie he could trust. Um, Hackman just delivers. But great selection by Butch, obviously. Uh, by, the, by the Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Also, to your, to your credit, though, too, with Shane, I want to touch upon this now, and then I'll retouch upon it next week. Shane my grandfather who showed me Shane, he said something I'll never forget. He said, you know, you rarely see Shane on TV when we were getting ready to watch it. And I said, why? And he said, I'll let you figure that out. And I said, oh, okay. And as soon as I saw it, I got why right away. And if I swear to God, if any idiot says, oh, it's because there's a Confederate flag in the movie. No, that's not why. There's a scene where Shane's bullet travels through the sand. In every way, Shane is your first superhero style Western. And no, there's no real Western like it in that sense. It breaks a bit of Western rules with that by doing it. And I think that's, that's why it gets sort of on a list of, well, we can't really show that. That's not traditional Western. Here's the thing. Screw tradition. It's made to be broken. Tradition is fine um, in its place. 
yeah. you know, uh, I have Christmas ornaments that have been given to me by family, friends, and 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 others that have passed away, and and I look forward, you know, every year to breaking that out and and thinking of my my you know my friend or, or you know my 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 family, my you know, my mother. You know, my mother passed away, and, and of course, this last Christmas we didn't really feel like doing a whole lot because you know, mom passed away in October. But every year, you know, I was, tradition's fine, you know, for that. And you know, if, if that's but if that's all you've got, if that's the only thing you care about at Christmas for it to to continue my story, you know, I think you're missing it. Tradition, tradition's fine, but that you don't have to stick to it, you know. Um, not all traditions are good, and after a while, especially with movies, and you're doing something, you're making a traditional this or a traditional that, and if you stick strict with the tradition, why do I need to watch it? I've seen several of these movies already. Yeah. You, you know, it's it's like uh, Rio Bravo, El Dorado, Rio Lobo, and Assault on Precinct 13. Yeah. basically all the same film but john carpenter brought it into modern day and took away the indians and and you know he added some to it. he 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 stuck with some of tradition but he broke some of it and told in my opinion maybe if it's not my favorite carpenter film it's in the top three so I mean, yeah you know i mean tradition's fine but we're, we're you don't gonna have to, we're gonna have to cover the original assault on precinct 13 here soon uh, I, thought we, I thought we did too we may have and i'm just forgetting i'm old uh so i apologize if we already have i'm older than you youngster so stop that crap uh, are you are you really no <laughs> yes i'm really you're a father i'm a grandfather ha ha <laughs> Good. But by the way, by the way, the, the reason Butch didn't get cast for this movie is because when he sent in his audition tape, they realized he was too fast. Uh, even <laughs> as when Gene Hackman. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, but yeah, this was a great movie to go back and watch again. I got to watch it with my wife too, and she just like, holy shit, there's a lot of people in this movie. And it's so great. Go give the quick and the dead a watch. Hell of a 90s western. My my wife actually she watched this one also. She goes, "Oh, I like this one because you know it's a there's a woman in it. You know, she's the lead character. So, um, you know, if you're if you're, I don't know how Julie is, the uh, Jules' wife, but my wife is not a big fan of westerns. She'll put up with them because especially you know she knows we do these videos. But um, something you know, anytime you can sit and watch with your your spouse, husband, wife, whatever." I think that just adds to it. I mean, th you know, I, I was trying to think about what what kind of rating I would give, and uh, and I, I think this is probably a, probably a nine, a solid nine. I know I give a lot of nines and very few tens, but it's just it's fun. I mean, this film is it's fun. And it, it's hard. I guess it's hard to say it was a film where somebody's getting killed about every five minutes, but. It tells a good story, interesting characters, interesting location, and, you know, it's kind of funny. It, this is a very traditional Western, except for the fact the lead character is a woman. Everything else, very traditional, as as I was saying, with, you know, this could be easily be a Clint Eastwood film. Yeah, I give this movie a 10. I'm with you. There, it's so good. I mean, it's just criminally good, and it's a movie that, you can still go back and watch and appreciate it's aged well you know really well it's not a that's the thing with great westerns with classic westerns do they age well do they age well through time yes movies we've covered on here have cut the first episode of kung fu from from el dorado to the man who shot liberty balance these films have aged well and this is another one that has aged very very well yeah so, you know what's funny i was thinking about liberty balance the other day I might even argue Liberty Valance is not really a Western. It's like the core story, what it's about, you could tell that story anywhere. I think that is uh, reimagining. I think Liberty Valance is, is a script, a story that could easily be updated 
and, and Toad nowadays, or you know, recent time, and and you could tell the same story. Yeah, there's a there's a new uh, I don't know if it's a series or maybe new uh, the Jan- uh, Django movie or series coming out. I forget what it is. Um, it might already be out. I don't know. I have to check. But I know there's the Django Unchained uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio in it, which I've seen, which is really good. Um, but there's there's a movie called Django that's coming out or a series. I forget which. I have to go look. But I'm going to send the Kung Fu episode to Mrs. Rosenbaum, the lovely Mrs. Rosenbaum, for her to watch since that's her favorite Western. We're going to do another episode of Kung Fu on here, not next week, but soon, I promise. Next week, Shane, and then Thank it'll be Butch's turn to pick. Buddy, this was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. Thank you, Butch, for the selection, and have a, enjoy the rest of your weekend, sir. Thank you, Joel. Always a pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. See you, folks.